Hello, Brother Munro here. Welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. And I'm here once again with Drakinifal, our resident expert. Hello. And today we're looking at the very last build for the Battleship League, and it is the Iowa, which hopefully will give us a little less trouble than her sister uh, cousins. Sisters? Yeah. Predecessors. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, we've done a bit of fiddling around with uh, displacements and things, and we've gone for this initial displacement just to get the length um, so that she's a little bit longer than the treaty fudge um, ship that we we made in the last episode so we've got the same choice of towers because it's the same hull so mm -hmm. I'm assuming either the 4 or the 5 for her yeah well let's go with the 5 for the minute and okay. see see how we go because I think we used the 4 on the previous one yeah, and the I was the I was egg They've got the they've got a slight the bar bit is slightly more integrated, so it's kind of accurate. Although we've still got this bizarreness of a <laughs> yeah, not the, the world's greatest tripod lattice mast combination, possibly <laughs> maybe. Um, um, I'm not entirely sure with that. But does uh, she have the same rear superstructure as the North Carolinas, or does she have a uh, a different one? Um, pretty much. I'm. I'm fairly certain. Um, just checking out some plans. The annoying thing is because the Iowas have been in service for so long, mm. you you end up looking. There's an awful lot of, and obviously photo photography etc. has um, been come a lot more common since. If you look for pictures and plans of an Iowa class, there's thousands of them for their 1980s. Yes. Uh, iterations. Fortunately, the superstructure profile didn't change all that much. So, um, so yeah, it, yeah. This this is the correct superstructure configuration, at least as far as the game will let us. Okay. Um, the funny thing is this kind of massive radar radio mast thing we've got going. Yep. Um, that is very much a post-war refit oh. thing. Um, <laughs> so if you go and see the ships nowadays, that that is kind of the well. Not exactly that, but roughly that is the kind of mast that you will see. Maybe the um, the designer looked at, mm. you know, did exactly what you just did. Photos of Iowa. It's like, oh, there's a photo, uh, or you know, there there it is <laughs> as yeah. an actual ship. It's got a it's got a tower like that. Not realizing that this this was a later edition. Mm. Um, it's just perfectly possible. And I'm assuming the the gun the guns which have just been popping on. Mm -hmm. Same same layout that we triple sixteens, yeah, yeah, triple sixteens, and then we've got a little bit more length to play with, so yeah, and then the double fives. Yep, double fives, pretty much exactly the same as we had before, and then um, just going to get these little one point six inch guns in. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. And for those of you who are looking at the displacement, going, not even the 1980s I was displaced that much. It's like, yes, we know. We, we know. Um, the, 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 the problem, basically, the problem we ran into it was that um, if if you have, have the displacement any less, it ends up shortening the hull, and yeah. we'd end up effectively rebuilding a slightly a slightly altered version of what we had before, which yeah, really just, wouldn't just, help. Just end up here again, so... Yeah, um, and the, the, yeah. With our with our fudge, there was at least the vague justification that there was, you know, they they were both thirty five thousand tonners, whereas yeah. the Iowas are very very different ships. Yeah. So we'll we'll try and keep this value mm -hmm. vaguely right, but yeah, don't worry. Yeah. About, don't 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 think about this one too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or the fact that we still have too far too short a stern. Yeah. <laughs> um. What about um funnels? Right, so the funnels, it's two funnels again, um, but this time we want one as far forward as we can get and the other one as far aft as we can get. Kind of like that. Yeah, that's about as good as we're going to get. I th you know, in practice, they're spaced further out, but in practice, as I said, the, uh, the hull's longer anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> and then uh, I'm assuming we have very similar setups yeah. uh, in terms of uh bulkheads and things like that but what about um yep. speed what was the top speed of an iowa officially it's 33 okay they can go a little bit quicker than that mm -hmm. um exactly how much faster depends on which particular sailor you ask <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> but they can't. They are. They are actually capable. They they are definitely capable of at least a couple of knots faster than that. Okay, and then presumably the same kind of oil. Yeah. Balanced. Gear two. Gear two. Orcs diesel. Yeah. Electro hydro. Electro shaft. Shaft three. three. Yeah. Setup that we had before, but these yeah. ones would be using. What, They're crop? still crop four. Crop four. Yeah. This, yeah. Um, still kind of yeah, good good barbettes, so barbette fours. Mm -hmm. Um, anti torp three. Um, stubble hull. Yeah, reinforced bulkheads, maximum Tools. anti flood, yeah. and all or nothing yeah. armor. Uh, and then we'll we'll skip past this. We'll come back to it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, coincidence four again. It's yep. the, the, the 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 different the time between the North Carolinas and the Iowas is very very short. Yeah, as far as battleship generations goes, and of course they're all being upgraded during the war as well. So yeah, Gen three radar, etc. etc. Okay. Uh, right. I'm going to give her the auto two loaders because we found that we. Yeah, we, we, we needed kind of... to do that last time. So yeah, um, and I'm going to just go for the base fusing cat ballistics because yeah. again we find that we and then we've got those. super heavy shells again. Yeah, and triple base yeah. and dunite. Dunite we'll... as our baseline. Okay, then. now this this is the interesting thing because of course unlike um, the other two ships, we now have the 16 inch officially the 16 inch 50 caliber gun, yeah. which has considerably better penetration so we're still if we're still looking at the twenty thousand meter bracket then we want roughly speaking something about 18 and a half to 19 inches of penetration okay so if it was 18.5 we need to get the 40 inch figure at twenty thousand to more like 46 47 mm. um, so the way they did that was lengthening the gun, of course. Yes. <laughs> so uh, let's let's try doing that. Let's go for well, what the game calls sixty caliber, but would mm -hmm. would, would be a would be the same kind of increase mm -hmm. of five calibers over yeah, what, what we had the, in the other what one. we had in the other one. That gets us up to forty four, and so we want to a little get bit we want to get up to forty six. Uh, we could change the dunite out for something else. That what, so what's dunite giving us as in, uh, as our AP bonus? Ten. Uh, well, ten percent actually. Maybe maybe not. Maybe dunite is the best for that. Hmm. hmm interesting. Very interesting. Uh, we could keep lengthening it, <laughs> but uh, the problem then That's becomes kind of like rate of fire. The loading. Yeah. What have we got yeah. for? We're already down to just under one round a minute. Yeah, so I really don't want to lengthen it um, anymore because it's going to make the rate of fire really terrible. Just... Helen, we've probably got the best propellant already, haven't we? Uh, we could use tube panel. I'm just going to quickly... Yeah, TNT doesn't help. Um, we could go from the triple base... That's 1.5. ...to tube powder, which is... Oh, that might do. 12.5% shell penetration. Yeah, that gets us over the 46. Um, 47.8. So we can probably drop the caliber down just slightly. Might make it turn and fire a bit quicker. Yeah. Uh, try and get it up over one round a minute again. Go for a mm -hmm. 58. That gives us 46.1 inches. And 1.1 1. 1 round, 1. 1 rounds a minute. I mean, it's not, round a minute. it's not. it's not reflective of their capacity at you know when they're going full bore mm. but as i've said in a number of other videos one round a minute is about right for most combat yeah especially at range so okay uh in that case oh uh and uh, before i forget i'll make these the 38 and mm -hmm. just as long as possible mm -hmm. um armor <laughs> right, so we previously went for what would be equivalent thickness at 20,000 metres against a Bismarck shell. Yep. Um, so in this case, we basically have a repeat of the South Dakota armour, mm -hmm. which is 12 and a bit inches inclined at 19 degrees, which then, um, if we adjust that for the, uh, the, the sort of 16 and a bit angle of fall anyway... That would give us the equivalent of about 14.9, 15 inches. Should we call it 15? So it's just slightly better than the... Yeah. 
the South the Dakota. Scotus, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, because they, they a lot of the stuff with the Iowas was repeat repeat um, of the South Dakota. R originally, the d design proposal was basically, what does it take to get a South Dakota up to 30 knots? <laughs> um, they got the bigger guns partially because they turned out, it, you turned out you could get it up to 33 knots without having to use up all 10,000 tons of displacement. And also because people were asking, well, why are we paying this much displacement and this much extra money for just a slightly faster version of what we've got before? Yeah. So they're like, well, we'll put some bigger guns on it as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 uh, that's uh, salesmanship, that is. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay, and then presumably just splinter protection on the extended bits of the ship. Yeah. Um, what about her deck armor? Was that just five-inch as well, like the South Dakota, or did they enhance that? Um, um, it's actually six. Six. Yeah, they, they did make some some improvements there as well and then the inners are they just just going to be uniform kind of kind of thickness? yeah yeah okay uh, let's uh use the trick of just maxing it out oops if i could type that would help <laughs> <laughs> and then put 1.5 in at the top yep. and then we get three, three yeah. bulkheads basically. Um, what about the turrets? Now, these are really nice and thick up front. They're nineteen and a half inches. Mm, very nice. And then on the tops, uh, on the roof is seven point two five. Call it seven point three. Three. Yeah. And the barbet. Uh, the barbet. Oh, no, that's the conning tower. The barbettes are 17.3. Very nice. At the sides, again, uh, the Americans put a lot more heavy armor on the sides of the barbettes than the front because obviously they're expecting to fight broadside. Makes sense. Um, oh, what but, was the conning tower armor, by the way? Uh, the conning tower is also 17.3. Lovely. And then. I think you said the five inch guns have what two inches two. of armor. Yeah, they're two. Just two inches of armor, and then mm -hmm. I mean that's 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 the score on the board, that's really. Pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, um, we're we're at, we're overweight, but I mean, well, we're at sixty and a half thousand. Six, sixty so and a half. We're overweight a bit for its World War Two full load, but we're actually pretty much on the money for its. Um, Vietnam era load. Okay. So what, what, what considering changed... we've got a slightly fatter beam than is actually historically yeah, accurate, <laughs> that's probably do. where it goes. Yeah. So what did they change? Because I know about the um, the refit they did in the eighties mm -hmm. and uh, Gulf War configuration. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, what did they do for Vietnam to her, if anything? So obviously, there's a bunch of electronics. Mm -hmm. um, the, all the, the sort of various radar systems were upgraded, communications, etc. Although not as much as you might otherwise think, because they did discover that um, actually, you know, in in Vietnam, um, the optical fire control systems and the fire control computers and the radar that they'd had originally were pretty much actually, you know, fully ac as accurate as you were going to get. Com with uh, Vietnam era electronics, uh, most of the visually distinct stuff that you get is is again mostly with electronics. They also strip out most of the forty mils. Okay. Um, they have them for Korea, but not so much for for Vietnam. Um, but the the other thing you see when you get to that period is the masts. So this this kind of mast that we've got on this um, is, is slightly odd in that it's got this kind of triple sort of tripod lattice arrangement which is accurate but then it's missing everything from the platform up which is where most <laughs> of the radar went so up, up here uh, yeah. yeah and there there were and during vietnam there were also there was this, this big box structure um roughly at that platform level as well which had a mm -hmm. bunch of stuff sticking out the sides okay. and if you see pictures of the iowas these days um they all have what most people tend to call the Christmas tree up on the bow, mm -hmm. uh, which is the kind of very spiky communication antenna. 
uh, which I personally think slightly ruins their lines <gasps> because the the the, the bow yeah, the bow lines that. look really nice, and then you stick this monstrous you know rebar Christmas tree on the front. It's just like <laughs> it's, it's a bit horrible. Um, but as uh, Ryan Zemansky of Battleship New Jersey said, the problem is, you know, if you take it off, you're also then taking off part of the ship's history. Yeah, I understand uh, that. And I mean, uh, yeah. I, I, think, I suppose that's the thing. As, as a historian who mostly goes up to just after World War II, I'm like, I don't care. Get it re- rid of it. I want my World War II Iowa configuration. Modern but, rubbish. Get rid of it. Yeah, I but mean, they yeah. have to. They have to think about slightly, uh, more slightly, slightly uh, greater arcs of history, considering that you know the bulk of the Iowa service was actually after the Second yeah. World War. You think and you're never to... going to get the five yeah. point, the five inch turrets they took away either. No, no. Um, yeah, because in the eighties. Yeah, they, they look very different because mm. all, all of this stuff was taken off and they got the tomahawks and the harpoons, all, the harpoons yeah. and all the, the and the drone. Yeah, the um, drone at the back. <laughs> at the back and all that kind of cool stuff. Um, um, but yeah, I think she looks I think she looks pretty close to an Iowa. Yeah, um, I think to be honest, if if I saw that coming to, towards me in game, the, the only thing about that that to me says not Iowa because uh, at this angle we're kind of disguising the fact she's got a sl- slightly shorter stern than is ideal yeah there you go <laughs> at that point the only thing that's really st- saying to me that something's wrong is the fact that this this mast just kind of terminates with this t- this tiny little flagpole <laughs> like there should be something up there this isn't this isn't like the second world war or the first yeah. world war yeah um it w- it would be cool if um, I don't know how how easy or hard this is to do in the game, mm. but if you if you uh, if you did get radar on your ship, it actually puts little radar modules on here, like mm-hmm. on, on on the top of your tower. That would be very cool, but probably a little bit annoying to code. So, um, uh, I'd, I'd love to see it, but I, I don't expect it because it's probably really mm. annoying to put that in. But um, well, thank you very much for joining me. A much quicker build than normal, but that's because we, yeah. we, we've we been recording this just after doing the uh, North South Carolina Dakota ship. Um, and uh, so we, we kind of remembered all the stuff to do with the American things. But um, the next thing for you, the viewers, is you're going to be seeing the uh, Division 1 actually kicking off um, and finding out to see who is going to be at the top of the leaderboard. Um, yeah. So the next time we'll be talking, I think, is when I've got the results to show you. Um, Which will be interesting. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited to see. And uh, as well, we'll, we'll go through um, the whole league, so all 20 ships or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll, I'll produce a little table and we can, we can have a chat about the results and... If it's at all interesting in, 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 in historical terms, probably not. It's just a bit of fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much for helping me with the builds. And uh, we'll uh, hopefully see you again on the channel doing something a little bit different. But uh, we'll leave that for another time. Um, thanks, everyone, for watching. And we'll see you again soon. Bye for now. See you, bye. Mm-hmm.